Tonight, three weeks to the election. There are two different visions for the road Texas wants to be on. Texas hasn't seen a race like this in decades. I'm not running against anyone, not running against another party. I'm running for this country. Republican Ted Cruz asking Texas voters for six more years in the Senate. Beto O'Rourke, hoping to be the state's first Democratic senator in 25 years. Now, live from San Antonio, both candidates face to face in the Texas debate. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sarah Fergani, news anchor at Kent's 5 in San Antonio. And I'm Jason Whiteley, political reporter and host of Inside Texas Politics at WFAA in Dallas-Fort Worth. We welcome our viewers from across the state watching this debate live tonight in all corners of Texas. So let's get right to it. Both campaigns have agreed to these rules tonight. For each question, the candidate will get 90 seconds to answer. His opponent will have 90 seconds for a response, and we will turn back for a final rebuttal of 60 seconds. Let's first, though, turn to Dallas, to our Victory Park studios, where we have a social media response team there. So as you watch this debate on television with us tonight, join in the conversation online using the hashtag Texas Debate. Now, we also have a live audience with us here tonight in the studio, so we ask you to please hold your applause during this debate, except for now, as we welcome the two candidates running for the United States Senate in Texas. Please welcome Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke here. Gentlemen, welcome tonight. Senator Cruz, you won the coin toss to have the final word tonight at the end of this program, so therefore we start with you, Congressman O'Rourke. Welcome to you. 21 days away from election, and there's still uncertainty about the security of our ballot boxes. And just yesterday, new cyber attacks again reported on election databases in several states. But misinformation online can be just as dangerous as so many people know. The question is, should Congress enact regulations on social media to protect voters from that misinformation? First, Jason, let me thank you and Sarah for moderating tonight's debate, Ken's Five for hosting us, the people of San Antonio for being here, and the people of Texas for watching this and participating in one of the most important decisions of our lifetimes. Es un honor estar aquí con ustedes otra vez aquí en, en San Antonio. Yes, the integrity of our ballot box, 242 years into this experiment, the American democracy that is the exception, not the rule in world history, is sacred. And it's essential that we continue to protect it. It's under attack unlike any other time in this nation's past. We know because the intelligence community has reached a unanimous conclusion on this that the Russian government sought to undermine our democracy. In fact, President Trump's own administration announced the indictment of 12 Russian nationals who compromised the voter data, more than half a million of our fellow Americans. And we know they will attack us again in this election and the next unless we stand up to them now. So yes, let's protect the integrity of our ballot box, which is why I'm a little surprised that Senator Cruz has voted against the funding to protect uh, access to the ballot box and to ensure that your vote goes to the candidate of your choice. And yes, we must also ensure that on social media, where so many of us now have become the product uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, that we are not manipulated and that uh, opinions that we hold are not shaped by those from other countries. So I want to work with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, work with this administration to make sure that we do that and every single voter can make an informed decision based on accurate information. Congressman, that is your time. 90 second response, Mr. Cruz. Of course we should do more. Uh, to protect the integrity of elections. And, and I'm proud to have supported, number one, funding from the federal government to the states to help secure our elections. But number two, just a week ago, the Senate Judiciary Committee passed legislation that, that, that I co-sponsored called the Deter Act that would punish anyone that comes to this country with the purpose of undermining elections. We need to make sure our elections are safe and secure. Now, your question was, should Congress be regulating social media companies and, 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 and what they allow to be said? I believe in the First Amendment. I don't believe Congress should be in the business of regulating conduct because I don't think it's government's job to, to, to regulate content, rather, uh, on, online. That being said, I am very concerned, and I know there are millions of Texans who are concerned, 
about the political bias of big tech, of Facebook and Google, skewing and silencing the voices of those who politically they disagree with. You may remember several months ago, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, testified before the Senate. And, and I asked him a series of vigorous questions about the political bias at Facebook. Now, even though Congress shouldn't regulate the content, there are two things we should think about doing. Number one, right now, big tech enjoys an immunity from liability on the assumption that they would be neutral and fair. If they're not going to be neutral and fair, if they're going to be biased, we should repeal the immunity from liability so they should be liable like the rest of us. Number two, the giant tech companies, by any measure, are bigger than AT&T was when it was broken up under the antitrust laws, bigger than Standard Oil, and if they're abusing market powers and monopoly, the Sen antitrust laws should be enforced. Senator, that is your co time. Congressman, to be clear, he said that, yes, we should enact, Congress should enact regulations on social media. Yes or no, in the, in re in the remaining 60-second rebuttal here for you, yes or no, for regulations on social media? Yes, I, I think we can have thoughtful regulations that ensure that we're making informed decisions based on facts and the truth, and we're not being manipulated by foreign powers. But it's interesting that Ted Cruz invested more than $5 million in Cambridge Analytica, which is the very company that helped to undermine our democracy, to feed false news and false opinions to our fellow Americans to manipulate the world's greatest democracy. Five million dollars from Ted Cruz that funded Cambridge Analytica. He voted against uh, supporting and safeguarding the integrity of our ballot box. And our junior senator uh, will not stand up to President Trump, someone who apologizes for Russia, defends that country, Vladimir Putin, the leader of the country that sought to undermine our democracy. He won't stand up against him and he won't stand up for us to make sure that our elections are free and fair, that your vote goes to the intended candidate. This this is beyond party politics. This is getting uh, this is getting our democracy back on track, and we need a a senator from Texas who will do that. Congressman, that is your time. Senator Cruz, Brett Kavanaugh was sworn in 11 days ago. The U.S. Supreme Court now has five justices who have either directly stated or suggested that Roe v. Wade was wrongly decided. Should we prepare for changes to abortion law in this country? Well, listen, I, I believe that every human life is a gift from God, is a precious gift from God, and it should be protected. It should be protected and cherished. I'm pro-life. Now, the question of what will happen at the Supreme Court on Roe versus Wade or anything else, we'll have to see when cases are decided. Judge Kavanaugh, just like his predecessors, just like Justice Ginsburg, just like Justice Kagan, declined to answer those questions, and that's been the standard at the Supreme Court for many, many years. I would note, though, on the question of life, there is an enormous difference between me and Congressman O'Rourke. On the question of life, Congressman O'Rourke is at the extreme pro-abortion side. So he has repeatedly voted in favor of late-term abortions. He has repeatedly voted in favor of taxpayer funding for abortions. I've got to say, that that's not consistent with the views of the people of Texas. The people of Texas, and I will say especially the Hispanic community, we don't want to see taxpayer-funded, Medicaid-funding abortions and late-term <clears throat> abortions. I think that's extreme and, and, and that's disconnected. And I, I will note as well, on the question of judges, judges is a massive divide between Congressman O'Rourke and me. I was proud to help lead the effort to confirm Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. I was proud to help lead the effort to confirm Justice Brett Kavanaugh to the court. Congressman O'Rourke would have voted against both of them, and he wants to see, like Hillary Clinton promised to appoint, left-wing judicial activists who impose their own policy preferences from the bench. I, I don't think that's what the people of Texas want. We want Senator, judges and time. justices who will follow the Constitution and follow the law. That's your time. Thank you. Congressman, you have 90 seconds for response. Senator Cruz has a very troubling record when it comes to judicial nominations and confirmations. He supported the nomination of a judge, Jeff Mateer, who described transgender children as part of Satan's plan, believes in conversion therapy. He supported the nomination of a judge, uh, someone to be a judge, who'd never tried a case before. An another potential judge who could not tell us whether Brown versus the Board of Education was correctly decided. From our perspective, in a state where you can be fired for being gay, I want a justice who believes in civil rights. From the perspective of a state that ranks 50th in voter turnout in the country, not by accident, by design, some people drawn out of their democracy, I want a justice who believes in voting rights. And for a state that is at the epicenter, of the maternal mortality crisis as we made it harder and harder for women to get access to the health care that they need. 
to get that cervical cancer screening, to see that family planning provider, to see a provider of any kind. We're losing them faster here than in almost any other state, almost any other developed country in the world. I will only vote to confirm a Supreme Court justice who believes in a woman's right to make her own decisions about her own body and who has the health care access to be able to do so. We should be able, the next junior senator from the state of Texas, to work with our colleagues, to work with the administration, to have justices who will rule in favor of people and our needs, not corporations, not special interests, not the political action committees. Those are some very significant needs that we have in Texas right now, not represented by Judge, now Justice um, Kavanaugh. And so, yeah, this, this is a decision that I'm concerned about. That's your time. Thank you, Senator. In your 60-second rebuttal, what should abortion law in Texas look like? Well, you know, it's striking that, that Congressman O'Rourke didn't dispute his extreme record on abortion, supporting late-term abortions, supporting taxpayer funding for abortion, supporting taxpayer funding for abortions <coughs> late-term, even for illegal aliens. That is, an, and he's voted for that, that is an extreme position. Fewer than 9% of Texans agree with him. He also didn't dispute that he opposed Justice Gorsuch, he opposed Justice Kavanaugh. And if you listen to what Congressman O'Rourke said, he said he wants justices that agree with his own left-wing policy views. That's not the job of the court. The job of the court is to follow the law. If you want to change the law, you do it through elections. You do it. The Constitution gives the power to the people, not five unelected lawyers in Washington. And let me note, the same judges that Congressman O'Rourke wants to see would also undermine the First Amendment, would undermine free speech, would undermine religious liberty, would undermine the Second Amendment. Hillary Clinton promised to appoint justices who would undermine the Second Amendment, and Congressman O'Rourke enthusiastically supported her doing so. Senator, that's your time. Thank you very much. Senator Cruz, President Trump said on Sunday that something is changing in regards to the climate. You're clearly on record for years saying there's no evidence to uh, just back that up, that nothing exists yet to back that up. But major oil companies, including Texas-based ExxonMobil, says even on this website, the risk of climate change is clear and warrants action. That's ExxonMobil's own words there. So what do you tell Texas companies who think this really is a problem? Well, listen, of course the climate is changing. The climate has been changing from the dawn of time. The climate will change as long as we have a planet Earth. Um, I am the son of two mathematicians and computer programmers. I believe in science. I chair the Science and Space Subcommittee of the Senate Commerce Committee. And indeed, in that capacity, I chaired a hearing looking on the science and data behind global warming. And we heard testimony. We heard actual science and data. Far too many Democrats approach this issue not as a matter of science. I think we should follow the science and follow the evidence. But instead, what they approach it as, as a matter of government power. They want the power to control the economy. That has led, for example, Congressman O'Rourke to cast some votes that I think are really harmful to the people of Texas. For example, Congressman O'Rourke voted in favor of a $10 a barrel tax on every barrel of oil produced in the state of Texas. That would have been absolutely devastating to the state of Texas. By the way, $10 a barrel, that works out to about 24 cents a gallon that every one of us would pay when you go fill up your car or truck. That would hurt the people of Texas. And let me point out, look, a robust energy sector is good for all of Texas. There are millions of jobs that depend on a robust oil and gas sector. And, and Congressman O'Rourke's record voting against Texas oil and gas, voting against energy, that hurts the economy, it hurts jobs. It's, it, it's not right for Texas. And let me point out, all of those oil and gas workers, they buy homes. They buy cars and trucks. They get health care. They, they give to churches and schools. And by the way, the University of Texas and Texas A&M get hundreds of millions of dollars from our energy that, sector. That's your time, Senator. Let, let's move on to a 90-second response from Mr. O'Rourke. This is what you can expect over the course of this debate. Uh, Senator Cruz is not going to be honest with you. He's going to make up positions and votes that I've never held or have ever taken. He's dishonest. It's why the president called him Lying Ted, and it's why the nickname stuck, because it's true. Um, look, the, the climate is changing, and man-made climate change is a fact. 300 years after the Enlightenment, we should be able to listen to the scientists and follow their advice and guidance. And they tell us that we still have time, but the window is closing to get this right. If we're going to make our commitment to the generations that follow and not just think about the next election or our political career or pursuit of, of the White House, then, then we can make the right decisions. Now, we can support Texas being a proud energy leader in oil, 
and in gas, but also in renewable energy. Today, Texas leads the country. We're number one in the nation in the generation of renewable wind power. We're number five and moving up quick when it comes to solar. The two fastest growing jobs in the United States of America today, wind and solar jobs. We can continue to grow this economy. We can reject the false choice between oil and gas and renewable energy. Make sure that we produce and refine and transport and use our energy resources more responsibly. And listen, this isn't one political party saying this. This is people of both parties in every single county in Texas that we've had the chance to listen to people. These are folks who work in the energy industry. Amy and I were in Ira and Texas listening to those who work in some of these fracking operations. What they want is predictability and consistency in the regulations, and then they will perform to them. Congressman, that's your time. Mr. Cruz, 60-second rebuttal. The question is, does ExxonMobil have it wrong? here. Well, it, it, it's clear Congressman O'Rourke's pollsters have told him to come out on the attack. So if he wants to insult me and call me a liar, that's fine. But, you know, John Adams famously said, facts are stubborn things. So if you want to see the vote he cast for a $10 a barrel tax on oil, go to our website. It's tedcruz.org. And we will put up the exact text of the vote and a link to Congressman O'Rourke's vote against the people of Texas. Let me say, if you work in energy, if you work in oil and gas. Congressman O'Rourke's record on this is extreme. He didn't just vote for a $10 a barrel tax on oil. He's also voted for aggressive regulations of fracking, aggressive regulations of exporting liquefied natural gas. He's a prominent supporter of President Obama's Paris climate deal, which would have killed thousands of jobs in the state of Texas. That's not good for Texas, and it's an example of over and over again. Congressman O'Rourke sides with liberal extremists on the national level instead of the people of Texas, instead of jobs of Texas. And, and, and by the way, Senator alternatives Metro time. are great too. Texas leads in energy across the board. Representative, this question is about immigration policy. Uh, we know your position and passion for the Dreamers, and we know that you are adamantly against extending the existing border fence. This question here is specifically about border security. If we don't need a border wall, can you please look at the people of Texas tonight and tell them what we do need? I'd be happy to. And, and listen, I don't know that there's another person who has a greater stake in this issue than I do. Amy and I are raising Ulysses and Molly and Henry in El Paso, Texas, uh, one half of the largest binational community on the border, the, the defining border community. We care about our kids' safety. I care about the safety of those that I represent in Congress. I care about the safety of every single person in the state of Texas. El Paso, in fact, is one of, if not the safest cities in the United States of America. It's because we have world-class law enforcement, police and sheriff's deputies, but it's also because we are a city of immigrants. A quarter of those that I represent were born in a country, another country, chose us, came here to this country, and by their very presence, made it better. No wall is going to solve legitimate security concerns, but, but, but smart policy will. And let me describe uh, one of those to you. Senator John Cornyn and I, though he's a Republican and I'm a Democrat, he's in the Senate and I'm in the House, worked on policy together to invest in our ports of entry. That's where more than 90% of everyone and everything that ever comes into the United States first crosses. Having a better idea of who and what comes into our country demonstrably makes us safer. And at the same time, those customs officers are able to facilitate legitimate trade and travel that's connected to more than a million jobs in the state of Texas. As we all know, here at the home of Toyota, trade is the lifeblood of the state of Texas. If we can make our communities more secure, as this bill did, and facilitate more job-growing trade, um, then, then we've really figured something out. And I think that John Corner and I have been able to do it. Republicans That's and Democrats time, working together on an issue that makes Texas better. That's your time. Thank you. Uh, Senator, you have 90 seconds to respond. So everyone should notice in his answer that he wanted to talk about trade, he wanted to talk about customs, he wanted to talk about everything except border security. And let me say, there's no race in the country with a starker divide on immigration than this race here in the state of Texas. As for me, I'm incredibly honored to have received the formal endorsement of the National Border Patrol Council, the union of the men and women who risk their lives keeping our nation safe. I, I will note here at this debate, I'm very pleased we had Brandon Judge and, and Paul Perez, both from the National Border Patrol Council. The reason they're supporting me is I've led the fight to secure the border, building a wall, using technology, increasing boots on the ground. We can keep our community safe. Congressman O'Rourke not only opposes a wall, but he has said we have too many fences and walls already on the border. He wants to tear down the ones we have. And I'll note, he brought up El Paso. 
El Paso is right across from Juarez, one of the most dangerous cities in the world. 3,000 murders last year. There's a wall there. That wall is one of the tools you use to protect us. But, but let me give you an example of just how extreme Congressman O'Rourke is on immigration. Case law, common sense legislation, overwhelming majority of Texans support it. I'm the author of Kate's Law in the Senate that says violent criminal illegal aliens, if they're deported repeatedly, should face a mandatory minimum prison sentence. Congressman O'Rourke has voted against Kate's Law. That's wrong. We, need, we should not be releasing violent criminals into our community. Congressman, uh, in your 60-second rebuttal, can you tell us your specific plan to secure the border? Well, as, as I just told you, uh, Senator John Cornyn and I have worked to invest in our ports of entry. That means staffing of customs officers. It means infrastructure at our bridges that connect us with Mexico, where more than 90% of everyone and everything first crosses. And it means investment in the technology that ensures that we do a better, smarter job screening those who first come into this country. That will make us safer. It also means that we support <coughs> local law enforcement, those police officers and sheriff's deputies who keep this country safe. We can do that as well. But listen, uh, we cannot use this idea of border security to be an impediment to moving forward on those issues that are also demanding our action, in which Texans know better than perhaps any other people of any other state. On issues of immigration reform, uh, the fate of DREAMers, nearly 200,000 in the state of Texas, when the Senate voted to move forward on debate for DREAMers, 98 senators showed up that day, 97 voted to, voted to move forward, only one senator voted no, stood in the corner while everyone else was at the table. Ted Cruz has put his career above the interests and priorities of Texas. Time. Ted Cruz is for Ted Cruz. That's well, your time. Thank and, you very and, much. Hold on a second. Let me, let me respond to that, please. Which is, I, I noticed <laughs> Congressman O'Rourke said we need to support law enforcement. I, I think that's striking that he says that now in a debate because his career has been one consistently of opposing law enforcement. Indeed, someone else who is here today is Detective Mike Kelly, who leads the San Antonio Police Officers Association. Senator Detective Thanks. Kelly has endorsed me. And I would note as well, 171 elected Texas Senator, sheriffs, including... Thank you very much. We have to Hold on, I get a 60-second response. Hold on, hold on. You have both agreed to this. But we agreed we could have a 60-second system. But we agreed We agreed on a 60-second sir rebuttal if necessary. And I want to make a point on law enforcement. That's he claims he supports. He already finished his rebuttal. We have to move on to the next topic. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's talk about health care now. What you're looking at for our television audience is a live picture at our Victory Park studios in Dallas where that social media response team is listening to our viewers out there too. The overwhelming conversation online we're hearing about is about health care. And one post asks you directly, Congressman O'Rourke, if universal health care is going to cost trillions of dollars, what do you cut from the federal budget or how much are you going to raise my taxes to pay for that? Let's start with the goal. What, what is it that we're trying to achieve? I want to make sure that everyone can see a doctor, afford their prescription medications, take their child to a therapist, be well enough to live to their full potential over the course of their lifetime. And I want to make sure that working families pay less for health care costs than they do today. So here are some steps that we could take to get to your answer. Um, we could expand Medicaid. This is a state that left $100 billion on the table. We could expand Medicaid. More working Texans are able to be well enough to go back to work, to be there for their families. We could introduce Medicare as an option on the exchanges to drive down the increase in premium costs and expand selection and choice. And then we could take the lead as the state that is the least insured in the United States, who perhaps better understands the consequences of failing to be there by and for one another better than anyone else on guaranteed high quality universal health care. There are a number of ways to get there from Medicare for all to one where you use a, a mix of employer-based insurance and the ability for people to pay into Medicare. That could come uh, at a cost of around $1.6 trillion over the next 10 years. If you look at the tax cut that Senator Cruz just voted for, $2 trillion added to $21 trillion in debt, the disproportionate benefit flowing to corporations and the very wealthiest, and move that corporate tax rate, not to where it was, but maybe five points from 21 to 26, you would generate the, the money necessary to pay for <laughs> access to health care so that everyone lives to their full potential. Congressman, that's your time. Mr. Cruz, 90 seconds response. It, it, you know, I have to say, he really didn't want to ans answer the question of how to pay for it. So let, let me be clear what it, what it would cost. Congressman O'Rourke is proposing socialized medicine the federal government in charge of your health care and your doctor. There are at least three big problems with that. Number one, every place on earth that happens, 
you have rationing and waiting lists. If you look at the United Kingdom, if, if, if a senior needs to get a hip replacement, it takes about 90 days. In the Canada, it takes about 200 days. But number two, the cost would be immense. When Bernie Sanders rolled out this plan, and Congressman O'Rourke supports the Bernie Sanders plan of socialized medicine, the Urban Institute, which is a left-leaning institute, scored it as costing $32 trillion over 10 years. That's $2.5 trillion in the first year. Right now, the total we raise from all of our in income taxes is $1.5 trillion. So Congressman O'Rourke's plan would require tripling your taxes. He said you could do it with five points on the corporate rate. That doesn't even pass elementary school math. We're talking about, and by the way, his next answer likely will be tax the rich. Well, let me tell you something. If you took every person in America making a million dollars or more, and you took 100% of their income, it would pay for five months of Congressman O'Rourke's socialized medicine. We can't afford those taxes. And third, he wants to put everyone who hasn't paid into Medicare on Medicare. That would bankrupt Medicare. It would hurt seniors. Seniors have paid into Medicare. They rely on it. And putting 200 million people, Senator including Tony, illegal immigrants, on it could, could bankrupt Medicare. Senator Cruz, at your time. Uh, Mr. O'Rourke, if elected in your 60 seconds rebuttal, how do you get that passed? Look, all you've heard from Senator Cruz is what we should be afraid of. Um, it's a campaign based on fear. It's, it's the same person who shut down the government of the United States of America for 16 days, perhaps because he thought too many people had too much health care, has voted to take away health care from millions of American families, and vows to repeal protections for pre-existing conditions. Not I want true. people to have more health care. I want people to be well enough to finish their education, to go to school. I want to bring people of Texas together, Republicans and Democrats alike, from all parts of this state, to make sure that we lead on an issue that we understand better than anyone else. In a state where the largest provider of mental health care services is the county jail system. In a state where people are dying of the flu and diabetes, in the wealthiest and most powerful country in the year 2018, surely we can do better. And I've laid out some steps that would allow us to do that, beginning with expanding Medicaid, introducing Medicare as an option on the exchanges, and then describing the goal that we want to get to, and ensuring that Republicans time. and Democrats alike come to the table to work on that. Congressman, that is your time. Senator Cruz, there's a lot of concern in Texas and all over the country about President Trump increasing the tariffs. Toyota says Tundra trucks produced right here in San Antonio will increase in cost by $3,000 next year because of rising tariffs on uh, auto parts. Two nights ago on 60 Minutes, President Trump did not rule out increasing tariffs again. So the question is, do you believe tariffs threaten Texas growth? And if so, is it time for the Senate to step in and stop it? I'm against tariffs. I'm against a trade war. Is it I, 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 it, let, let me answer the question. I'm against tariffs. I'm against a trade war. I have made the case repeatedly to President Trump that in, in trade, we should be expanding our access to foreign markets. We should be expanding our, the ability of Texas farmers and ranchers and manufacturers and energy to export our goods and services. If we are reducing the barriers, whether it is to Mexico or Canada or China or anywhere else, so we're selling more, that's a good thing. If we're erecting barriers and shutting down trade, that is a bad thing. On this, this is one of the few issues on which Congressman O'Rourke and I have some common ground in that we've both spoken out in favor of trade. The difference is that I'm able to work with President Trump and make the case to President Trump, and we have seen, we have seen, for example, the President has negotiated a new NAFTA, a new trade deal that, that has benefits that should benefit the state of Texas, that should benefit San Antonio. Congressman O'Rourke is not able to work with President Trump, and indeed, Congressman O'Rourke is the only Democratic Senate nominee in the country who has explicitly come out for impeaching President Trump. That is extreme, and it means if Congressman O'Rourke has his way, you know, he mentioned a shutdown. You want to talk about a shutdown with Congressman O'Rourke leading the way two years of a partisan circus shutting down the federal government in a witch hunt on the president. That's not good for the state of Texas. It's not good for our country. Uh, Senator, that is your time. 90 seconds response from you, Mr. O'Rourke. Really interesting to hear you talk about a partisan circus after your <laughs> last six years in, in the U.S. Senate. Um, listen, um, if, if you have this special relationship with President Trump, um, then, then where is the result of that? Um, you are all talk and no action. Um, the tariffs that the president has levied, the trade wars that he has entered this country into, is hurting no state more than it's hurting Texas. Our farmers, our ranchers, 
our producers, our manufacturers, and our exporters. Right here in San Antonio at the Toyota plant, where Amy and I bought our Tundra and met the folks who made it. Yes, we have problems with other countries around the world. China dumping aluminum and steel, manipulating their currency. And I want to make sure that we stand up to China. But when have we ever gone to war, including a trade war, without any allies? And that's exactly what the president, with Senator Cruz's help, would have us do. We've alienated the European Union. We've alienated Canada and Mexico. We've alienated all other potential partners, and we're going it alone against China, and it is not working. Just listen to the farmers, and I know you haven't had the chance to, to visit every county, but I have, and I've listened to them, and they are hurting. And the anxiety and the uncertainty of not knowing when these trade wars will end, or the certainty of knowing that when those trade wars do end, those buyers in those other countries will find other people from whom to have bought from. And they will no longer be coming to Texas to buy what we grow, what we raise, what we export, and what we, what we manufacture. We need a senator who will work with the president when we can and stand up to him where we must. And on these tariffs, we sir. must stand up to him. Uh, senator Cruz, 60 seconds for rebuttal, but I want to ask again, should the Senate step in and stop this? I think we should keep working with the president, which is what we have been doing. But, you know, Congressman O'Rourke just, just, just asked an interesting question. He said, where are the results? Congressman O'Rourke and I were both elected to Congress on the same day six years ago, November of 2012. We've served exactly the same length of time in Congress. In those six years, I have authored and passed 34 separate pieces of legislation, major victories for the American people. But he asked where are the results. I'll point to one front and center, which is the historic tax cut that I spent thousands of hours bringing senators together, getting passed. And he said, where are the results? The state of Texas is booming. We've got right now the lowest unemployment in 49 years. African-American unemployment is the lowest that's ever been recorded. Hispanic unemployment is the lowest that's ever been recorded. Youth unemployment is the lowest in 52 years. Texas is seeing the benefits of low taxes and low regulations. And Congressman O'Rourke's position is always, always, always in favor of higher taxes. He said in response to how Senator he pays for socialized time. medicine, higher taxes, that's not good Senator, for Texas. thank you very Senator much. Time. Representative O'Rourke, uh, you supported $15 billion to help victims of Hurricane Harvey. But two weeks after that, you voted against a bill that would have also given them tax relief. What do you tell those victims who are still struggling financially today, one year later? I've been with many of those who were affected by Harvey. In the immediate aftermath, going to places like Rockport or Port Aransas, Houston, Beaumont, Port Arthur, and continuing to come back again and again to see what we can do to be helpful. I voted for more than 136 billion dollars in aid to support those communities who've been hit by natural disasters, including Harvey. And in the specific bill that you asked about, the, the tax relief was not as great as we have seen for those who have been through other natural disasters. I thought we could get a better deal. But I am there for those communities each and every single day. I continue to go back to places like Cashmere Gardens in Houston, Texas, which more than a year later is still not fully rebuilt. And I continue to wonder why Senator Cruz voted against more than $12 billion in FEMA preparedness, knowing full well that we will see more Harveys going forward. Mind you, that was the third 500-year flood in just the last five years. We know that there will be more of these floods coming, and I want to make sure that the people of Texas, especially Southeast Texas, are prepared for the next one. That $12 billion also included hundreds of millions of dollars in support for volunteer fire departments, like the one that I visited in Rockport, where of those 20 volunteer firefighters, more than half lost all of their worldly possessions and were sleeping on the floor and in the firehouse as they responded to the emergencies in their community. So yes, I will be there. I will work with anyone, anytime, anywhere to make sure that those Texans who need the help to rebuild get it and that we invest in their ability to be resilient Congressman, for the next Congressman, that's storm. your time. Thank you. Senator Cruz, you have 90 seconds to respond to that. Houston is my hometown. Hurricane Harvey hit Texas unlike any disaster we've ever seen. It's, it was devastating. I was home with, with Heidi and my girls during the hurricane and, 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 and for months thereafter spent time in virtually every community along the Gulf Coast two, three, four, five times working with the state and local officials. I mentioned earlier 171 sheriffs have endorsed my campaign, including 10 Democrats. One of the reasons why the overwhelming majority of elected sheriffs have endorsed my campaign is because many of those sheriffs I worked with hand in hand after Harvey. In the Senate, I helped lead the effort to pass three major disaster relief bills. 
working hand in hand with John Cornyn where we improved and expanded those disaster relief bills. And the emergency tax relief that you just referenced was legislation that I authored. I authored, introduced, passed into law, did it jointly with John Cornyn and Marco Rubio. The Cruz Cornyn Rubio emergency tax relief gave over $5 billion in emergency tax relief for families impacted by Hurricane Harvey. It passed both houses of Congress, overwhelmingly was signed into law, provided immediate relief for those impacted by Harvey. Only four Texas Democrats voted no on that legislation. One of them was Congressman O'Rourke, the congressman from El Paso. And, and there was a reason for that. You know, he gave an answer now. He said that it didn't provide enough tax relief. That's not what he said at the time he voted no. At the time he voted no, he said the reason he voted no is that he wanted, he, he wanted to That's focus on time, illegal Senator. immigrants That's instead of hurricane thank relief. You. That was his answer at the time. Representative, and that doesn't so, thank you, Senator. Representative, you get 60 yeah. seconds for a rebuttal. Do you regret that vote? I don't. I, I will always see what I can do, work with anyone, anytime, anywhere, to do better for Texas. And that, that was what I was trying to do. But, you know, Senator Cruz mentioned listening to and working with local leaders in Houston. Um, I've listened to and worked with the mayor and the county judge, a Democrat and a Republican, each of whom is still waiting for $1.1 billion awarded to the local governments in community development block grant funding that has still not made its way into the neighborhoods, into the streets, into the homes, into the businesses to rebuild. They need a full-time center, not somebody running for president who's going to focus on their needs and make sure that that money gets there. They need a full-time senator who would have been at bat for them before the storm on infrastructure projects that they had identified needed funding, but they needed a senator who was going to work for them. Army Corps of Engineer approved projects totaling in the hundreds of millions of dollars who did not have an advocate because he wasn't in Texas. He wasn't in Houston. He was in Iowa. He was in New Hampshire. He was wondering for another office instead of taking care of the concerns and the needs of the people of Representative, Texas. Representative, thank you very much. Senator Cruz, a year ago this week, October 18th, 2017, you tweeted out the following statement. When it comes to the deficit and debt, it is immoral. The debt we have, we have to turn it around, you wrote. Yet two months later, last December, as you just mentioned a moment ago, you voted for the Republican tax plan that the Joint Committee on Taxation, Congressional Budget Office, and many other nonpartisans say will add more than a trillion dollars to the deficit. Some people see the tweet and the vote as hypocritical. Are they not? Uh, they are not remotely. I'm proud to have supported the tax cut. The tax cut is producing enormous benefits for the state of Texas and for the country. We're seeing record growth. We're seeing record low unemployment. It's, it's benefiting four million new jobs in the last two years. And, and, and by the way, one thing that, that, that Democrats never seem to understand, if you want to pay down deficit and debt, and I care passionately about the deficit and debt, it is immoral, the deficit and debt we've racked up. If you want to do it, the only force strong enough to do that is economic growth. Now, let's go back to a little history. In the 1960s, John F. Kennedy, a Democrat, campaigned on tax cuts, cutting individual tax cuts and the corporate tax rate. He said a rising tide will lift all boats. He passed it, and the economy boomed and federal tax revenue went up. In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan campaigned on cutting taxes to get the economy growing. He passed it. The economy boomed and federal tax revenues went up. We did the same thing this time. This time, with that tax cut, we're seeing the results, and today, to date, Federal tax revenues have gone up. Senator, Federal tax revenues are higher in, in this year than they were last year without the tax cut. Respectfully, Senator, I, I was with you in Iowa. I've heard you on the campaign trail since 2012 saying how bad the deficit is. Yes. And, and, and this vote would add to the deficit, though. J Jason, no, it wouldn't. That, that projection is wrong. By the way, that projection also would have said that the Kennedy tax cuts would have added to the deficit and the Reagan tax cuts would have added to the deficit. The reason we have deficit and debt is not that we cut taxes and spurred the economy. The reason we have deficit and debt is because <laughs> Congress keeps spending. That's Senator, why that we need to time, pass sir. term limits. It's why we need to pass a balanced budget amendment. We need to stop the out of Senator, control that spending. Is your time. Things like socialized medicine. Second response, Congressman O'Rourke. 90 second response. Speaking of balance of budgets, um, only one of us has, with good friends in El Paso, started a small business. Uh, met that payroll every week, balanced the books, made sure that we delivered for our clients. Only one of us has served at the local government level every single year balancing the budget, seeing each other not as Republicans and Democrats, but as council members entrusted with a fiduciary responsibility to deliver for the taxpayers of El Paso. Every single year we did. And for Senator Cruz to say that this isn't going to bust the budget at a time of $21 trillion in debt when we're on track to deficit spend to the tune of a trillion dollars a year, he voted to add $2 trillion 
dollars. And those tax cuts disproportionately will flow to corporations who are already sitting on record piles of cash and the already wealthy in a country that is riven with income inequality unseen since the last Gilded Age. Why? In the days just before and just after that vote, Senator Cruz accepted $120,000 from the political action committees who represent the corporate interests <laughs> that benefited from this tax cut. Why does he vote for this? Why does he vote for internet companies to sell your private browsing data to the highest bidder without your consent? Why does he not vote for universal background checks in a country that loses 30,000 people to gun violence every year? Follow the money. In each of these cases, if you look at the political action committee contributions to Senator Cruz, it helps to explain the reasons for his vote and how corrupted Congress has become. I don't take PAC money, not a dime. I always Congressman, that is your only time. represent the people of Texas. Congressman, that is your time. Senator Cruz, 60-second rebuttal. You know, Congressman O'Rourke is f fond of saying he doesn't take PAC money, but, but the truth is different. For example, the J Street PAC, which is a rabidly anti-Israel PAC, has raised over $160,000 for Congressman O'Rourke because of his many votes against the nation of Israel. Another example, he has a super PAC based up in Dallas that, that has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars is spending them on ads attacking me and my family. So when he says he does, doesn't take PAC money, he just lets others do it for him. But let me say more fundamentally, the reason people care about this is they care about who you're fighting for. Consistently, if you look at Congressman O'Rourke's record, every time there is a choice between left-wing national activists and the people of Texas, he goes with the left-wing national activists, and he goes with the left-wing national donors. For example, we were talking earlier about his vote for a $10 a barrel tax on oil. That is a great vote if you're raising money in San Francisco. It's a terrible vote if you actually care about jobs in the state of Texas. Senator, that is your time. We, we want to keep this uh, debate on track here. Let me ask you the next question, though, Senator. Weber Shanwick did a poll this year with almost 70% of Americans saying civility is a major problem in America. Yeah. Let's talk about the tone of this yeah. campaign and what's happened here in the last uh, half hour, 45 minutes. We, we all watched as activists chased you and your wife Heidi out of the restaurant in D.C. And then, Senator, some say you couldn't even give a political free compliment to your opponent in the first debate in Dallas. So the question is, what responsibility do you have to bring civility and respect back to the country? Listen, Jason, I think every one of us has a responsibility to bring civility and respect. That's something I've endeavored to do throughout politics, is to focus on substance, to focus on issues, to focus on record. And so the personal attacks, the going to the gutter that is so common in politics, I try not to engage in. If you look at my disagreements with Congressman O'Rourke, they haven't been personal attacks. They've been his voting record in Congress that has been markedly out of step with the people of Texas. You are right that there, there is a loss of civility, there is an anger, there is a rage on the far left that, that is really frightening. You know, the images of, 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 uh, hold on, let me answer with, don't interrupt me, Jason. The images of, uh, of a left-wing mob beating on the doors of the Supreme Court. That's not good for our country. We can disagree while treating each other with respect, while treating each other with civility. I think that's important to do. We can discuss. Are tax cuts good or is raising taxes good? That, that, that's a discussion we ought to have, but it shouldn't be personal. It shouldn't go down to the gutter. It should focus on actual substance. And let me tell you, I think the lowest point we have seen is the confirmation hearings for Justice Kavanaugh, where we saw Senate Democrats be willing to smear Judge Kavanaugh and his family, be willing to repeat unsupported, uncorroborated allegations and go after him in a way that, that, that I thought was shameful. It was important that that process be fair, that Dr. Ford get a full and fair opportunity to tell her story, that she be treated with respect, and she was. But it was important Senator, that he that be treated time. with respect as well, and he was not. Senator, that is your time. Congressman O'Rourke, 90 seconds for a response. Every year, Allegheny College presents an award for civility in American politics. One of the first years, it was awarded to Senator John McCain and Vice President Biden. Um, another year, it was awarded to the family of the late Justice Antonin Scalia and Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And last year, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough, to receive that award along with Will Hurd. Uh, our ability to travel across the country as a Republican and a Democrat uh, in a car and Facebook live stream the whole thing, but then to get to work in Congress and join one another's legislation to do better for our constituents, regardless of the party differences that might otherwise stand between us, was recognized. 
Um, it's, it's the same kind of approach that I take to just about everything that I do in Congress, everything that I do in life. When we found out that veterans were unable to access mental health care services, that half a million veterans with bad paper discharges were denied the ability to go to the VA, I worked with my colleague from Colorado, Mike Kaufman. Though he's a Republican and I'm a Democrat, we were able to bury the differences, compromise, a four-letter word among some in Washington, D.C., and find a consensus piece of legislation that passed the House of Representatives 435 to 0, passed the Senate as well, and was signed into law by President Donald J. Trump. Now, President Trump is someone with whom I don't agree on everything. But where we could make things better for those veterans, we did it. We buried the differences, we put them aside, and we put this country's interests before us. That's the kind of leadership that we need from Texas going forward. That's the kind of Congress leadership this country time. deserves. That is your time. Mr. Cruz, in your 60-second rebuttal, I was going to ask you, doesn't the inflammatory rhetoric just exacerbate the situation? Uh, absolutely. I think we should focus on substance and not inflammatory rhetoric. Uh, you, you know, I will say it was striking and at this press conference in D.C. about civility. Congressman O'Rourke again repeated his call for impeaching President Trump. That's the very essence of not civility. If we had impeachment next year, we'd see utter chaos. We would see an end to the repeal of the job-killing regulations that's fueling our, our, our economic growth. We would see an end to many, much of the progress we've seen rebuilding our military, making progress on foreign policy. Washington would be consumed by partisan investigations. That's not civility. Let me point out more, more broadly. It's interesting that Congressman O'Rourke points to a bill that another congressman wrote that he was a co-sponsor of. There's a reason for that. Have you noticed in his campaign, have you noticed in this debate, he doesn't talk about what he has accomplished in Congress because he has scored political points rather than accomplishing victories for the people of Texas. We've already talked about emergency tax relief in the wake of Harvey that I authored, passed into law. That was bipartisan. We had, we had Democrats and Senator Republicans. That was good for Texas. That is your time, Senator. Uh, gentlemen, uh, you know, when it comes to the Me Too movement, the president said it is a very scary time for young men. Congressman, you're raising sons. What do you tell them? I'm raising two sons and, and a daughter. And I tell each of them that it's critically important that they are treated with respect and that they demand that from everyone in their life and that they treat one another and everyone in their life with respect. Uh, I'm very grateful for the leadership that we have seen across this country in uh, positions of public trust in Congress, in people at the neighborhood level uh, meeting the challenge of this moment. Um, Congress members like uh, Jackie Speer from California, who authored legislation that I co-sponsored that ensures that members of Congress are held to a higher standard, that there's true transparency in their conduct, and there's not the ability to cover up, and there's the important training to make sure that everyone in their offices, in their lives, is treated with the respect and the dignity that they deserve. I also support the Violence Against Women's Act, that makes sure that we have the resources and the training and the funding to protect the lives of the women in our lives and in this state and throughout this country. Inexplicably, or, or maybe he'll have an explanation, Senator Cruz voted against the Violence Against Women's Act. We have to make sure that we're more than just talk. We have to have actions that follow this up. We've got to make sure that, for example, when we're talking about women, we're talking about equal pay for equal work. When we're talking about women, we talk about ensuring that they can make their own decisions about their own bodies and have access to the health care that allows them to do that. It means that our rhetoric has to be followed up by our actions. And in Senator Cruz, we don't have that today. Congressman, thank you. Uh, in response, Senator, what do you tell your daughters? Uh, I think the Me Too movement <clears throat> has done an incredible amount of good for our country. Sexual assault is wrong, sexual harassment is wrong, and we've seen in recent months powerful men in Hollywood, powerful men in politics, powerful men in journalism, powerful men in business called to account for abominable behavior. I believe everyone, women and men, girls and boys, need to be protected, need to be treated with dignity. And, and, and as you noted, I am the father of two girls. I want them to, their rights to be protected. I want them to be valued. I'm also the son of my mom, who, who graduated from Rice in 1956, went to work at Shell as a computer programmer. She was a professional woman in the 1950s, faced a very difficult climate. My wife, Heidi, my best friend in the world, uh, works in the financial sector. Again, always a difficult client, uh, climate. We need to protect everyone's rights. And, and, and let me tell you, when it comes to stopping sexual assault and when it comes to, to dealing with those who, who commit them, before I was in the Senate, I was the Solicitor General of Texas, the, the, the chief lawyer for the state in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. 
I handled over and over and over again cases dealing with rapists, dealing with those who committed sexual assault, dealing with child predators. It, it, and, and it has been a passion of mine. And Congressman O'Rourke mentioned sexual harassment in Congress. Well, I joined with New York Democrat Kirsten Gillibrand. The two of us were the lead authors on legislation to stop the, the indefensible practice of secret taxpayer settlements for members of Congress who, who, who were harassing their staff. There should be no secret settlements. They That's should be public. Time, Senator. And, and it's important Thank that there you. be accountability. Congressman, you get 60 seconds for rebuttal. Listen, I, I pointed out two specific opportunities um, for Senator Cruz to, to do the right thing, one of them being the Violence Against Women Act. Um, didn't hear a, a good reason why he failed to support that. Um, look, you've got somebody, as I mentioned earlier, who is all talk and no action. Um, you've got somebody who left the state of Texas uh, within a year of being elected to represent all of us to run for another office. Hasn't been to all the counties of Texas, but has been to all 99 of Iowa. Has missed a quarter of the votes in 2015, missed half of them in 2016. There's only one other senator from either party over the last 25 years who has a worse, uh, who has a, a worse record on bipartisanship. In other words, Ted Cruz has a harder time working with members across the aisle than almost anyone else to get anything done. So if he's not showing up in Texas, if he's not showing up in D.C. to vote, who is he showing up for? I want to make sure that whether it is women and the issue that you just asked about now or any other Congressman, priority that we have time. as a state, we have a senator who shows up every single day Gentlemen, for every single one of us. That's your time. Thank you. Let's move on to something different here, too. We have 60 seconds for each of you. We want you to tell us something you've done in the last year that has nothing to do with politics that will give Texans insight to who you are as a person. Senator Cruz, you first. <sighs> <laughs> Look, I will say... The hardest thing about being in this job is being a dad. My, my girls are here at the last, last debate. Congressman O'Rourke and I talked about that. Both of us are dads of young kids. And it is tough. It is tough. Our girls are 7 and 10. Monday morning leaving is really hard. Um, you know, last year I was I helped coach Caroline's girls basketball team, the fourth grade basketball team. The, the basketball practices were, were Sunday afternoon, so I was able to be at the practices. As, as Caroline will point out many times, in the course of the whole season, I made it to one game. That's not okay with her. By the way, one of the games that I thought I was going to make it to was going to be a Friday night game. I was planning to come back. It was the night of the vote on the tax cut. And so I was in the Senate, and I had to call home and say, Caroline, I'm sorry, I've got to be here to vote on this. Let me tell you, for, for a fourth grader, the fact that you're voting to cut taxes is not an explanation for why Daddy is not at the game. That's really a hard thing. You know, being a dad, I mean, part of what we do, we, we, we call on, on FaceTime, and, and, and we, try to, we try to carve Senator, out every Sunday for the family. But that is hard, Senator, and I take being a dad really seriously. Senator, thank you for sharing uh, as well, too. Congressman Rourke, 60 seconds. Um, you know, I, I, I think much of what Senator Cruz just said resonates with me. We've spent the better part of the last 21 months on the road campaigning in every single county of Texas. Don't get to see um, my kids as much as I want to. Know that Amy takes on the, the lion's share of the burden with the child who's just entered sixth grade, uh, another who's in fifth, and, and Henry who's, who's in second. Every now and then we get down in the basement where I have a drum kit that ostensibly was purchased for Henry, but really was for me, um, a PA and, and an amplifier. And uh, me and the kids will rock out, and uh, Amy allows us to do that for a little while. We go to Ulysses' uh, travel baseball tournaments. Uh, the last one was in Las Cruces. Uh, I've had them in, in Alamogordo uh, as well. Uh, just went with Molly who is nursing back to life a blind squirrel that was picked up in East Texas, dropped off in El Paso at a wildlife animal rescue run by Miss Julie, uh, got to meet this blind squirrel who's uh, slowly regaining its sight. Um, you know, Henry, um, uh, one of the best parts of my day is when I am at home getting to walk him to school and just talking about uh, what he dreamed about the night before and what he's into uh, this day. So with very little time uh, outside of the campaign or my official job, I spend it with my family. Congressman, thank yeah, you for sharing thanks. as well, too. We've asked you both a lot of questions tonight. Now we want to let you guys address Texas voters directly. You both get two minutes 
for closing statements here. As we mentioned early on, a flip of the coin gives you the final word tonight, Senator Cruz. Congressman O'Rourke, you're up first. Listen, um, I just want to thank you each for, for moderating this debate, everyone who has been here to witness it, and all those who made uh, this campaign in the election of our lifetime possible. Um, I was talking to Amy tonight about this moment that stayed with me um, after I first met Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis. Uh, he's meeting with members of the Armed Services Committee, and he reminded us that the United States historically has enjoyed two principal powers that distinguish us from the rest of the world. One is the power of intimidation, to field the, the most awesome military force the world has ever known. The other, uh, and he thought maybe the greater power, is the power of, of inspiration, uh, to continue to be the indispensable nation that lives up to the promise and the potential of our founders, uh, a, a nation that not just Americans look up to, but the world looks up to. And whether we will remain the inspiration of the world is an open question right now. Walls, Muslim bans, the press as the enemy of the people, taking kids away from their parents after they've survived a horrifying 2,000-mile journey seeking asylum here in this country. The bitterness, the partisanship, the pettiness, the dishonesty that defines so much of the national conversation. We are in desperate need right now of inspiration. But I'll tell you what, traveling the state of Texas, meeting people regardless of their walk of life, their background, their party affiliation, you have inspired me. You've inspired me to transcend the obstacles, to be the big, courageous, bold, strong match for this moment. On any issue that challenges us, uh, in Texas where nearly half of school teachers work a second job just to make ends meet, making sure that we're there for them, pay them a living wage, and ensure that they can teach to the child, not the test. In this state of immigrants, making sure that we lead the national conversation, free dreamers from any fear of deportation, and the least insured state in the country could take the lead on guaranteed, high-quality, universal health care. You have Congress inspired me in this race, and I'm grateful to have the chance that is to represent time, you. Thank you. Senator Cruz, two minutes. The classic question in politics, are you better off now than you were two years ago, is Texas. Elections are about choices. Do we continue on the path we're on, or do we turn back? The records of Congressman O'Rourke and myself could not be more different. On taxes, I want to cut your taxes. Congressman O'Rourke wants to raise them. On job-killing regulations, I want to repeal them. Congressman O'Rourke wants to increase them. On Obamacare, I want to repeal Obamacare, reduce premiums, protect pre-existing conditions, and expand access. Congressman O'Rourke wants socialized medicine, the federal government in charge of your health care and your doctor which, among other things, would threaten to bankrupt Medicare. I want to keep the economic boom we're experiencing right now going, moving forward. Congressman O'Rourke wants the next two years to be drawn into the partisan circus of impeachment proceedings against President Trump. Elections are about who we are. Do we choose fear or do we choose hope? I believe in hope. My mom was the first one in her family to go to college, and she was a pioneer professional woman. My dad came from Cuba with nothing, washed dishes making 50 cents an hour, came here seeking the American dream. If someone had approached my dad in 1957 and said, 50 years hence, your son will be a U.S. senator representing the state of Texas, that teenage immigrant could never have believed it. And yet, as I stood on the Senate floor with my hand on my dad's Bible, there was my father in the gallery, tears running down his eyes only in America. This is a choice about keeping the boom going, keeping. We have the lowest Hispanic unemployment ever recorded, the lowest African-American unemployment ever recorded. Why would we want to screw that up? We need to defend jobs, defend the Constitution, Senator and Cruz, secure our time. borders. That is your time, sir. We appreciate it. Mr. Cruz, Mr. Roar, thank you for sharing tonight. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Quick reminder, our social media response team in Dallas is uh, still watching us trending from tonight's debate. Tell us what you thought about the candidates. Please use the hashtag as well, Texas Debate. Remind to our viewers as well, early voting begins on Monday. The election, 21 days away. November 6th, we appreciate you watching tonight.